Jit, giving you guys an update on the market this week. Since COVID-19, there have been a lot of questions, not just about the market overall, but about the market every week. So this week, the fourth week in June, we are going to share with you what is going on in the market. For a start, and then we're going to give Bridget some questions to answer for us because she is out there hustling in the field like you've never seen. For the start, it, at, in our company, Atlanta Fun Homes, um, we're in the office space of Buckhead, but this is Atlanta Fun Homes at, overall. Since since COVID kind of came out several weeks ago, we've been at double the con, double the number of contracts every week this year to last year. In general, at large in Metro Atlanta, sales are up overall twenty one percent. So the market is definitely picking up. The other thing we want to we're going to cover and tap into is the whys of this and the issues and how to address things moving forward. A lot of the concerns are appraisals. Some people are saying appraisals are coming in low. Why and how do you address that? And there's still limited inventory, yet pent-up demand. What does the market look like as a result of that? What are the issues of that, uh, the obvious issues of that? How do you address them? As a seller, that's a great opportunity. How do you make sure you keep it an opportunity and not turn it into a problem? All that said, Bridget, that was a lot of information I just covered. We've got sales going up but appraisals coming in low and multiple offer situations. What are you seeing out there in the market? Um, first of all, they're not all coming in low. So truth be told, I have had several come in value. Actually, none of mine recently have come in low. I know that was a discussion um, among the agents because some are seeing them come in low. I think it boils down to how appraisals have always worked, where if you are working with a big bank and they are bringing in their appraisers from all over being 200 plus miles away. I'm going to have to shut the door and say, um, we, I know this is not cool. edited either. Everybody, they got to get the real, there's no edit. And I like, hold, give me two seconds. Okay. That might get it done. Okay. Um, I just had this conversation yesterday, so I can speak to it, but that's exactly the case. If you're working with a big bank, we all know if anybody's paying attention that the big banks bring in these appraisers from 200 miles away and you are not going to get a high quality appraisal in my opinion. So I think so we've got a problem or it is on occasion problems. Like a lot of people, I don't know that we've had problems. It's not. Um, you're right. Yeah. It's not so what, and what is, what is the solution is, is in the market is for our buyers and our sellers. What is the solution for that to make sure we don't, we, why are we not having that problem and how do we make sure you, we don't continue that problem doesn't arise? So I don't want to use the word not allow or two words not allow, but essentially I have not allowed my buyers to go with anyone that I might question. Because it just, it's, we work so hard and to then get what, 21 days, sometimes 14 days to 21 days into the process and have an appraisal come in low is defeating to all. And especially, especially when we know that's not how it should be, right? When we know the value's there, it's different if it's overpriced, but I don't, I'm not seeing overpriced as much as I'm yeah. seeing the sellers want the price that they think it was, it should be worth. Right. And they're not willing to negotiate on price and the buyers, you know, it's one of that's where I'm not seeing, a, um, I'm not seeing the problem being that they're, they're, they're overpriced. If a home is overpriced, that's different. Yeah. I think we talked about this earlier. A lot of the problem comes in with, with there are two things. Number one, sometimes people are working with banks that aren't going to have appraisers that are really well-versed in the areas that they're buying houses in. That presents an issue. Another issue is if the market, people are like, well, if the market's so good and prices are, houses are priced so well, why the issue? And it would be that there were a few in certain markets, in certain areas, in certain comps you know, fast kind of, for lack of a better word, quick or, or a little bit desperate sales that drive the comps down. So as agents, when we can bring in the comps, we can bring in the information and help the appraisers out with that information. Now in COVID, we can't always be present with them, but obviously we have phone calls, emails, Zoom calls, and all that good stuff that we've clearly gotten very used to. Um, what would you say to this recovery that we're experiencing. Um, you know, we've got 
21% more contracts in Metro Atlanta. And in our office at Sotheby's in Atlanta, we've got double the contracts week over week over week since COVID. So that's what's, <laughs> that's what's been interesting and, and sometimes difficult to explain to our buyers because the sellers don't seem to hesitate at all. If they want to sell, like, they're like, let's do it. Um, now, whether they put it on the market or not, that's the case. So I can go back and talk to that if you want on the appraisal yeah. situation, because if you're not on the market, we don't have the comps and the appraisers aren't digging. That's the problem. Yeah. They want it easy and they want it quick and they're not digging for them. So it's our job to dig for the appraisal, for the off market deals and show them like what is closed in the last six months or three months. That said, back to your question, um, <laughs> the, Correct. What was your question? <laughs> We're just talking about the market and how it's picked up and all of this pent up demand that's coming out of the market, even though um, there's a lot of talk about unemployment rates. They were high. They're going back down. But we've still got this pent up demand. We still got people buying houses like crazy in every price point. So it's getting the buyers over that hesitation. Really, and it's just making them feel comfortable. And a lot of times that's taking a little longer than it used to or than we're used to mm -hmm. allowing for. But it's it's just massaging them. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just yeah. kind of like getting through like one step at a time, um, especially your first time, even second time buyers, they're hesitant and they don't understand why the sellers aren't negotiable. Um, and sellers even lot. We've sold how many houses in one day for full price? Full price in the last week. So it's it's interesting how the market is turning, and I think as buyers, it's a little bit scary. Is you know how do you know it's right? But buyers are obviously motivated, and that would go to interest rates are low. Um, interest rates are, I'm seeing two. In yeah, front of everyone. What's everyone. that? I'm seeing two in front of all of my buyers. They're getting 2.75, 2. .75, 2 point, yeah. I mean, they're all, they're, it's low. Yeah. If you're, if you have been able to hold your credit, like your interest rate is so low. And that's another reason the sellers know it. Yeah. So they're not willing to negotiate. In fact, they're trying to move prices up. Yeah. Well, the buyers are, the buyers are, we had a multiple offer situation recently and um, we had four or five offers. And the buyers are getting clean on terms. They're coming up on price. They're, I think your agent is important, making sure you know that your agent has a good reputation for being easy to work with. Because if you know you've got an agent coming in on a deal that's going to be easy to work with and knows the business and knows how to make a deal happen, that helps everybody bring the deal together a little better. So, um, so to wrap all this up, I think... We talked about the market is up as sellers and buyers. How do we address the market best? How would you sum that up for sellers and buyers advising them on, Hey guys, here's how you take advantage, best advantage of the market as a seller and Hey buyers, you've got low interest rates. What are the benefits of buying now and why would I, or would I not wait? So that's a great question. And I often have to remind myself that I, and I admit out loud to all of my clients, especially the ones who are trying to sell and buy that I often find I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, which is kind of a big family joke, but it's true because you almost have to talk to both sides. It's, it's, it's real estate in general, right? That's kind of real estate what I want. Like mm -hmm. if you're buying and selling, it's either good for a seller or, bad, or good for a buyer. Like it's typically not both. Well, this is the so, first market where it might be good for both. Maybe good for both. You're right. Only because the interest rates are so low. Yeah. Um, what I don't want to see is a bunch of overpriced, overvalued homes because then that's where, so I actually like that the appraisers are being honest, but within reason is fine. Um, Cause that's what happened the last time. But that's not the problem. We're not creating a problem. This is just, at, at the end of the day, I think more and more people just were too, too much of a family for their home. When you have everyone working at home, you have two you know, active working adults at, in the house and children. And y'all can probably hear mine because I'm sorry. No, we don't. Okay. So yeah. they, <laughs> there's just, it's hard. It's been very challenging for these families who their home was okay. It was enough. And is that what's, do you think that's what's motivating a lot of people to move now? 
that's from what I'm seeing. And, and again, you know, the majority of my, the majority of my clients or families and or, um, or planning to be families, they have all said, well, my home is too small. Wow. Well, the great thing about that is it's going to unleash this pent, this, there's a pent up demand, but part of that pent up demand, there's becoming more demand, but people locally moving is also going to give our buyers more and more inventory. Um, you know, a lot of buyers are wondering, there's so much, pent up, there's not much inventory, but there are people who will sell. Mm -hmm. How do we figure out who they are? I have an easy answer for that, but give us yours. No, go ahead. Uh, you've heard mine, but I can talk. Oh, no, give it. I want to hear it. You want me to give mine it's for it, but go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. It's just piece in the puzzle. I mean, you literally have yeah. to, like, it's like a puzzle. You have to put the pieces together. And, and that comes into getting a good agent. Mm -hmm. Because we have, how many resources? Somebody was asking me, how are you How are you guys finding houses off market? Do you have like a list? I was like, oh, well, we have a lot. Right. And we have lots of processes and lots of systems and, mm -hmm. and it depends on what you want and where it is. And we come up with a strategy and approach and we make sure you get it. <laughs> Any fun final stories you want to share before we let, before we go off this call today? I know it's supposed to come with the story. Um, I will tell you, so <laughs> I'm talking about good agents. Um, I, for the first time in my career, have helped this season. So in the last 30 days, I've gone in for over four to five hours of my time and help them prepare their home. I actually find it soothing. I think it's like the people who have discovered gardening or I don't know, woodworking or something and during all this COVID stuff, but it actually is almost like calming for me. So I've offered it and, and sellers love it. So just whoever's listening, words of wisdom, I don't know, help your sellers prepare. If you can find like a strength that you have to help them, they really appreciate it. You're awesome. You're Thank awesome. you, Bridget. Thanks, hey, buddy. Thank you. We'll be back with more updates. Talk All to right. you soon. Thank you to our ambassadors and clients for your support of Jerry Metcalf Partners, where our mission is to deliver the best service and the best results for our clients' needs, their wants, and their families 